Hey, it's Jig Lines from Automator, and in this video, you're going to see it's an extraction from our Intro to Auto Hockey course in V2, as Ace walks through how to use commands and functions in Auto Hockey. They're all really kind of functions, but he explains how you'd use one and when you use one approach over the other. There's hundreds, or at least over a hundred or so, of built-in functions in Auto Hotkey that allow you to do really powerful things. So check it out. Again, this is an extraction for our Intro to Hotkey course. Most of the videos are from three to five minutes long. This one's a really good size. It's like, you know, four and a half minutes, something like that. And it's just great because they're bite-sized. They allow you to learn exactly what you want. Uh, the course itself is structured very clear, and you can jump around and learn different things. They also come with a 200% money-back guarantee. So you might want to check that out because you have nothing to lose. If you Let's say you paid $50 for it. You know, if you didn't like it and you thought that it wasn't good enough quality, then you would get $100 back if you decided to ask for your money back. But that's how confident we are in our, our course. So hope you enjoy it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also consider, you know, subscribing. In our hero group, we cover stuff like this in our hero group, which allows you to interact with us asking questions when you get stuck in things. So you might want to check out the hero group as well if you're new to this. Cheers. Auto Hotkey comes with a lot of built-in functions that will make your life a lot easier. Now, the only thing with Auto Hotkey version 2 is that functions and commands are the same thing. Usually, semantically, they mean something a bit different, but in Auto Hotkey version 2, they're one and the same. Let me show you when I would use one, when I would use the other, and during this course, which one we're going to be using. So, if we take a look at uh, an empty script like this, you might have noticed that I was using message box, as you can tell here, and I was just putting a message in quotation marks like that. Now, this is what is called command syntax, which means that um, the parameters that I'm going to pass to the message box command are going to be to the right of it, and I'm just going to use commas to separate it. The message box command has three parameters, the message, the title, and uh, some options like icons that you can set. And also, for example, which buttons it would have. If I don't have any buttons, it would just say OK. But if I want a yes or no button, I would have them here. And you will get a message box with an X for the icon, which can be changed with different options that it has, and a yes and no button, right? So, and you can see that the title has been set to whatever I put here. So that's how you pass parameters to a command. Now, here's the thing. As you can see here, I had a yes or no button, but when I how do I know which one I pressed? <laughs> that's where a command and a function kind of like diverged a little bit. What happens is, if you don't care about gathering information from the command or function that you just used, you can use the command syntax exactly as I'm showing it here. If you want to save information from that command into a variable or to use it with another function, for example, then you would have to use the function syntax, which is simply using parentheses around it. So is exactly the same syntax, it's just with the parentheses around it. But once you do this, you will be able to save whatever that returns into a variable like here. So let's say chosen button, right? So this is my, my variable. And now the message box is going to show my message, it's going to have its title, it's going to give me two buttons. But once you press one of the two buttons, the information about it is going to be stored into this variable. And later on, I can just go ahead and show that variable. So again, let's go ahead and use the message box command. But this time, I don't care about anything else. So at this point, I'm going to choose the command syntax. So now, at this point, if I go ahead and do this, I will get my message box with my message and my yes and no. And if I click no, my my second message box is going to use that variable and tell me what it has in it. So that's the difference between the command syntax and the function syntax. Whenever you actually need values from a function, 
you will need to use the function syntax. But it is good to know that whatever you prefer, however you prefer to do it, is just fine. Just keep in mind that in this case, this instance right here, that will not, I, I cannot get the information out of this message box. Actually, you will get an error. If I try to use command syntax and try to assign it, I should get a, an error saying that something was wrong in my syntax. So again, if you want to save information, you have to use function syntax like this.